Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Dorothy. I'm a professional astrologer. You can find me on the web at nhastrologer.com. And there you'll be able to read the full moon and new moon forecasts at the appropriate time when they come up. So don't jump the gun. <laughs> Just wait till they're near. Today I want to talk about December for the sign of Capricorn and those with Capricorn rising. So what we have, let's get started. We have December 4th, we have Venus and Sagittarius making a trine aspect to Jupiter and Leo. And we also have the Sun and Sagittarius making a trine aspect to Uranus and Aries. And what that creates is this big thing called a fire trine by sign. It's a little wide for, for by aspect, but by sign. And so that engages all of these fire energies. And when it engages all these fire energies, this is fantastic because it gives us all kinds of excitement. And Venus and Sagittarius, Venus represents our money and the things that we value. When it's in Sagittarius, it's, a, it's overabundance. It's like buying in bulk, all right? You know, we buy one sweater, we'll buy four, or we'll buy 12, because we want one in every color, because we love it so much. Jupiter is also Sagittarius' natural planet, and so if it's it in Leo, it's doing the same thing, but it's retrograde. So it's kind of fun because it's all, everybody's kind of doing, they're cooperating and they're doing lots of the same things, which is exactly what we want at holiday time of year. And so with the Sun conjunct, um, the Sun trine Uranus as well, this energy is exciting and it's movable and it's changeable and we're all over the place. So this bodes well for all of this. And let me give you the list. Shopping, spending too much money, buying Christmas decorations or Yule decorations, holiday, we'll say holiday, buying your holiday decorations, decorating your house, illuminating your house, illuminating a tree, and going to parties and socializing. And that goes into the next day because, you know, even though it's not part of December 4th, December 5th, Mercury makes a trine aspect to Uranus as well. Because the Sun and Mercury are neck and neck with each other all month long. Which means there's just a lot of energy behind these two planets in the sign of Sagittarius. Lots of fire, lots of communication. Let me get out there. Let me have fun. Let me go drive here. Let me drive there. And it's, you know, especially if you have a family with young children, you got to do Christmas concerts. You got to go shopping. You got business partnerships. Oh my God, there's too much to do. This speaks to that 100%. Now we need to watch our budget because sometimes we're going to go overboard with these planets in relationship the way they are. We could go overboard with our spending. The full moon on December 6th is at 7.27 a.m. And for you it is in that sixth house. And so <clears throat> with the full moon in that sixth house, that is a focus in on what your daily routine is about and what it's like. Now you naturally have Gemini in there, so you're used to having a daily routine that's not much of a routine, but something that is like, well, just here, there, and everywhere whenever you feel like it. And that is what you'll be doing, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it bec something becomes too much, the full moon will illuminate that and, and help you to realize that there is something that you need to let go of whether you've been doing too much and it's time to release a certain chore that you have in your daily life so you can fit other things in instead, you know, it, it'll be, I don't know, it'll be something in that nature. So when there's a full moon in your sixth house, again, it's all about communicating what it is that you need at work, what it is you need for your support around you in your daily life. And it is a focus in on your health a little bit. So if you have a cold or respiratory something going on, then you're going to want to focus on that. Or give yourself some um, herbs or whatever it is that you do to support your lung health so you don't catch a cold or catch a lung infection or the sinuses. All right? Pretty simple. Just take care of yourself. Sixth house, whenever it's illuminated, we need to take care of ourselves. I want to move on to, and that's the full moon. So you'll be able to read that on the website, on my website, as that time comes closer. Because the forecasts get post early, and the written uh, new moon and full moon stuff isn't up until a week or so before. So come back and check that out on my website. Now on December 8th, that is when the Mercury and the Sun, Mercury and the Sun are conjunct in Sagittarius. That's your 12th house. So in there, it just says that, you know, there's opportunity for you to bring up things that you don't typically bring up in your life. Things that just sort of stay hidden. 
we all have that area, that 12th house is just that area where we keep things hidden from ourselves even. So there's a lot of activity in Sagittarius right now, so there's a lot of activity in your 12th house as well with all the Sag planets moving through that sector. So and embrace your Sag, Capricorn. <laughs> all right, you do that. On December 10th, Venus moves into the sign of Capricorn, which is in your first house, and so that means you need to value you. And you need to tell those around you what you need. Because everything that's in Capricorn right now is in your first house. That means it is all about you and you need to be selfish. You need to, you need to take care of yourself before others. We all need to do that, but this is highlighted for you at this point in time. Okay, Capricorn? Mainly those with Capricorn rising. This is more true for that. If you're born at sunrise, that would be you as well. All right, if you are Capricorn. So I'm going to move on to December 12th. We have Mercury in Sag, and it makes that trine aspect to Jupiter. And two days later, the sun will make the same trine aspect to Jupiter because, again, Mercury and the sun are together right now. When they make a connection like this to Jupiter, again, it's just more about socializing. It's more socializing. It's more parties. It's more getting out and having fun and decorating. So we have this 10-day period really all the first two weeks of December is all about you know accumulating all those Christmas gifts or holiday gifts and decorating our homes and celebrating and being out there and just having a lot of fun with others that is what it comes down to in a nutshell and this is a great way to do it even if it wasn't Christmas or if it wasn't December you know if these transits were happening in another time of year in a different way of course um, it would still be very much all about celebrating and having fun whatever your holiday is but we have one serious thing here on December 15th uh, Uranus and Pluto make another square this is number six out of seven started in in June 2012 was the first one the last one will be March in March 2015 so we're at number six out of seven so if you haven't understood what shifts and changes are going on in your life yet, then you're not paying attention because Pluto in Capricorn is in your sign. And you are, you, everything about you is going through a transition right now. And I know a few Capricorns that will, will deny that, but it's not true. You know, you go through, you're going through an, a deep internal transformation. And at the same time, Uranus is making a square aspect to this Pluto. And that is all about you need to break free and not do the same thing you've always been doing. This is a global transit. And this has affected the whole world. And it started in 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn. And we really didn't pick it up as humans. We really didn't pick up the ball until, until Uranus kicked in in June 2012. And we finally said, hey, bankers, hey, political people, whatever, those big corporations, this is enough. You know, we're fighting monostat, monostato, oh, whatever they're called. I can't remember how to pronounce it. Um, you know, we're fighting our own governments. You know, we're, we're protesting this and protesting that, and we're trying to make change happen. Now, it can happen on a global level like that, but where it truly happens is, is on a personal level. And where am I changing in my heart? Where am I changing in my life? What is going away needs to go away. And what the, the new things we need to bring in need to be of a higher vibration. We can't just get rid of one thing and replace it with the same thing. That won't work. People will do that, but that's not going to work. We need to raise the vibration. What does that mean? I know that sounds like, oh, it's just one of those metaphysical words. It just means do things more with light and do things more from love and compassion. That's what we really need to do. All right, so I want you to think about that because we have a, another transit on the 25th, which I'll get to in a minute. But we need to do things more with light and love and compassion. And we just raise the vibration. So on a personal level, you know, again, this goes from your first house where Pluto is, and that's the, you know, the, the place that's changing the most. So you on a personal basis, plus the sun sign of Capricorn, you guys have been going through some just some deep, some deep shifts. <laughs> There we go. I just say the right word. <laughs> the other word's appropriate too, honestly, but I won't get there. 
All right, I want to move on. December 16th, Mercury moves into Capricorn. So again, that's all about having and those conversations. Mercury's been in Sag in your 12th house. Now it's in uh, your first house in Capricorn. And have that conversation. Have those communications. Speak up. Tell people what it is you need. That's what you need to do with that. December 20th, Venus in Capricorn squaring Uranus in Aries. When that happens, what we get with that is we get the energy of, um, it, it's very unique energy, and that Venus in Capricorn is all about, you know, really stabilizing what we value, but Uranus is like, so, hey, no, it's not going to happen that way. Let's do something new. Let's do something fresh. Let's find a new way to produce this, and let's find a new way to do that, but it happens through challenges. So we're challenged to change our old patterns, okay? Venus will also conjunct Pluto on that day, again, in the first house. So again, this is all about really transitioning and changing the patterns and how we feel. It's, it's, it's all about power and control, you know, what we have control and power over in our own lives and how we're trying to take that back. Some people will be giving it away, but let's try and take that back and feel more in control of who we are ourselves. With Capricorn as a rising sign, or you being a Capricorn, you always feel like you need to be in control. And if you don't, then you feel you you don't feel like you have a lot of value. So we're trying to establish a new value system for yourself here. That's what this year is about for you. On the twenty first, we have the winter solstice. We also have the new moon in Capricorn. So the winter solstice is on December twenty first, as well as the new moon. And the new moon is at eight thirty six p.m. Eastern time zone. And that, that forecast will be posted as we get closer to that time period, so you'll be able to go read a little more information about that. But mainly what, that's, what that wants you to do is to set new goals about your, for yourself in regards to your first house, yourself. New goals, that Capricorn energy is all about setting goals and setting up. It's like a business plan for your life. That's what you need to do. Set goals in regard in, in like a business plan, all right? On December 25th, Mercury conjuncts Pluto, and when Mercury conjuncts Pluto, again, that's in your first house. That just means there is a deep transition happening. There is a deep issue coming to the surface that you need to address. And it can be related to a relationship or not, but it is something that is personal and important for you. And with that being said, it's like I want you to, if you have to bring something up, bring it up with love and compassion. But if you feel it's coming from a place of fear, don't bring it up. And if somebody brings something to you that they want to discuss with you, and this is on Christmas Day, which is kind of sucky, but, um, you know, for some people. But if something, somebody outside of yourself, you know, a family member comes to you, usually when the Mercury is involved, it can be a sibling. Um, and a, a serious issue can arise then surround the situation with, with love and compassion so at least it, it can have um, some sort of resolution. It's a difficult transit, but it's a quick transit, but it happens on Christmas. And some people will, will simply be, feel sorrowful and sad because they're missing loved ones who passed this year and this would be their first holiday without them. Even if it's not the first holiday without them, we do miss those. So honor those who are not with us anymore. I know that's serious. So on December 31st, I want to end this on a light note. The moon is in the sign of Taurus. So New Year's Eve, it be responsible, be logical, be practical, but eat, drink, and be merry because Taurus is all about our physical senses. Taste, smell, sight, have fun, play, eat food, just celebrate in a safe way. And I want to leave you with that. So thank you all for watching throughout the year. Thank you for the last five years I've been on. I will continue to do so. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing my passion, working my passion, and doing this that I love. So thank you very much. And blessed be. Happy Yule. Namaste.